And uh, joining us on the Book Talk segment, great to uh, welcome one of the co-authors of a book that uh, did so well in hardcover. It just came out in paperback uh, this week as we uh, do the interview. It's called The Tools, uh, Five Tools to Help You Find Courage, Creativity, and Willpower and Inspire You to Live Life in Forward Motion. We're joined by uh, Barry Michaels today uh, from Los Angeles. And a very pleasure to talk to you. How are you today? Good. Thanks so much for having me. First of all, congratulations on uh, the great success uh, when the hardcover came out. What was it, about a year ago now or six months ago that it came out? It was, it was a year ago, yeah. A year ago, yeah. Uh, I, I guess you never, you never really expect, uh, you know, when, when a book is that much of a success, I, I guess you dream about that, but uh, did it exceed what you thought? Oh, <laughs> my happened? God, by, by a long shot. I mean, Phil and I were pretty sure we were just going to self-publish it, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> when we got profiled in the in the New Yorker magazine, uh, it it generated a lot of interest among publishers, not only in this country, but we actually sold to 35 foreign markets as well, and it, it was a shock, a complete shock. I mean, we knew that we had something really good, but you never know whether it's going to appeal to people or not, so you know, it was very, very exciting for us. It, it started out as a, as a just the magazine article, right, before you thought of making it into a book? Is that right? Well, we had, no. We had been writing the book for about five years or so, um, but we figured all along the way that we'd probably just self-publish it or something. Mm -hmm. Then when we were profiled in The New Yorker, we we got a lot of attention from publishing companies because we mentioned that we had this book. Um, and so when they started to express interest, we realized, oh, my God, we're actually going to be able to publish this thing. So... That was very exciting. And I guess any time you write, uh, I don't know if it's still the term used, but a self-help type of book, I guess publishers are probably a little wary of that and say, well, what, what do you have that's new, right? I guess exactly. that's the biggest thing you got to overcome, right? Exactly. And we were, we were determined to write a self-help book that, in all modesty, was really unprecedented in two ways. The first is it gives you very specific tools. These are procedures that you can use inside your own mind to help you generate forces to overcome your problems. And I can go into that in more detail sure. if you're interested. The second, the second thing that I think marks our book as different from any other self-help book or really any self-improvement book is that we assume that you're going to quit the program that we recommend. <laughs> See, most programs don't assume that. They just say, buy the treadmill and then your problem is solved. When, in fact, your problem is you're going to get up on it for a week and then you're going to quit. And it's human nature to quit these things even when they're working because we just get smug and self-satisfied with it. So we've got a fifth tool in the book that actually stops you from quitting using the other four tools. A lot of, uh, a lot of treadmills become nice uh, coat racks. Exactly. <laughs> but this book won't be a coat rack. I, I, read, I read through the book, and, and, and your fifth tool uh, kind of puts a little bit of, uh, of uh, impetus into people. Uh, you use this tool, and, and, and you're going to, it's going to put the, I guess the deadline is probably the best way to put that, right? Exactly, exactly. It's a way of using, it's a way of injecting a sense of urgency into your life in a good way, not in an unhealthy way that causes you more stress than you can take, but in a way that wakes you up and says, hey, use this moment, it really matters. Now, you talk about it in the book, uh, how you and Phil kind of uh, you know, came up uh, w with this idea. You tell some you know, personal stories about yourselves, but uh, maybe briefly kind of go over how, how you got uh, involved in this project. Well, I was originally an attorney, and I was not happy with being an attorney. I just didn't enjoy it very much, and uh, it took me about three years to get up nerve to actually quit, having no idea what I was going to do next. I was very lucky in that I wasn't married, I wasn't responsible for anyone else, and I had saved up a lot of money because attorneys work such long hours. When I quit, I, it took me a little while, but I realized that I wanted to be a psychotherapist because I, what I enjoyed most about being an attorney was that other lawyers would come into my office to complain, <laughs> and I was actually a really good listener. But when I went, to, went back to school to become a shrink, I realized that I was taught to analyze problems, but I really was never taught how to solve them. And so patients would come in and they would describe these problems and they would say, look, I've been in psychotherapy before and I know why I have my problem. Just give me something that I can solve it with. And I came up short and I don't like that. 
I mean, just as a person, I feel very frustrated if somebody's paying me money and I can't provide the service that they're asking for. Luckily, I met Phil Stutz very quickly, very early in my career, and he had developed these tools, these procedures that actually allow people to overcome their problems and develop their potential in ways that were really unprecedented. I mean, as soon as I gave certain tools to patients of mine, I realized that they were not only getting better, they were becoming better people in lots of different ways in their lives. They were becoming better leaders, better parents, uh, better workers, more creative, etc. So I was sold on it from the very beginning. Now, did you uh, look up Phil Stutz, or how did you kind of you know, get together on this project? Did you know him before? Or you know, it was 25 years ago, and I don't remember exactly how it happened, but mm -hmm. someone told me about a, a series of seminars that he was giving. And I went to the seminars, and I realized, wow, I have never heard anything. This was not covered in my education. Right. <laughs> this, was, this is completely new. It's completely radical. And basically after that, I bugged him to death. I mean, I just, <laughs> I called him, I, you know, uh, and, and he mentored me. He basically supervised me and helped me learn to do what he did. And within, you know, three to five years or so, I was kind of more on my own and I could do it on my own and I didn't need his help as much. But we kept up a friendship after that and after a while I think it was I who actually came to him and said look Phil all my patients are telling me that we should write a book and I think we should do it and he was basically thinking the same thing and we, we realized that we had come up with the four exact same tools to write in the book that each of us was considering writing and we sort of took that as a sign that we should work on it together and so we did. Hmm. Well, one thing about this particular book that, that uh, you know, I enjoyed about it, and, and unlike a lot of the other ones, I know a few years ago the big, uh, big self-help book was The Secret, but that seemed to be kind of ambiguous. You're never really quite sure what that was about. Uh, your book, I mean, you, you're, you're specific uh, what, what you're talking about. I, I think that, that's one thing that sets it apart, at least in my mind. Is yes, that something you kind of set out to do? It's very much what we set out to do. Phil and I looked over our patients, all of the patients that we had treated, and we realized that there were four problems that just came up over and over and over again. And we realized that most people actually, I mean, I certainly have all four problems. Um, most people have at least two or three. And so we decided, let's tackle those four problems in a very specific way and give people tools for solving them. And rather than go through all of them, I mean, you know, if you want people to, to read the book, but maybe uh, maybe one or two of them, uh, a brief synopsis uh, of, of the tools. Sure. I'll give you an example of the first problem. The first problem is something that I've found everybody does, which is they avoid what they should be doing. Okay? Yeah. I'll give you myself as an example. I'm a, I'm a writer. We have a second book due at Random House uh, in September. And... I feel like that's great. I mean, that's a wonderful opportunity. The problem is, I hate writing. <laughs> I, mean, I really hate sitting down to write. It's solitary. It's very difficult. And I will do almost anything to avoid it. I mean, the other day, I actually found myself playing one of my son's old video games just to avoid sitting down to write. Now, the first tool in the book, which is called The Reversal of Desire, I use that tool to get myself to sit down and write. And what the tool does is it provides me with a, basically a force. It's, it's kind of like a powerful, aggressive force inside of me that breaks through all of my resistant feelings, and it gets me to sit down in the chair and write. Now, when I use that tool over and over again, the interesting thing is I not only am able to get myself to write, I actually find myself not avoiding other things, like I'm more sociable, I'm more expressive with my wife, um, I actually get more creative ideas. So what I'm saying is the tool helps you overcome a specific problem, but the force that the tool generates actually expands your life in really interesting and unpredictable ways. As a writer myself, uh, Barry, I, I, I relate to that very well. Uh, anytime you want to, you, you have to get something written, uh, there is that tendency to, well, some of the distraction, you get off, off that topic, so I can understand that. For I've never treated a writer who hasn't <laughs> had that problem. I think it's just the nature of the, of the skill. It, it, it's it hard really to do. Is. Yeah. yeah. All of a sudden, the laundry seems like the most interesting thing to do. <laughs>
<laughs> but once you get on the flow and, and you get going, then then it kind of if you're lucky, you, you tap that vein and then you go and and, it comes and then out. it's very exciting, exactly. Yeah. And that's that's what I tell my patients is if we can get you through just the initial pain and discomfort of sitting down and forcing yourself to do something, then what's going to happen is a flow of creativity is going to take over, and we won't be able to stop you, which is great. That's the state that every creative person wants to be in. Mm. Well, the book is just coming out in, uh, in paperback. Uh, the Tools is the name of the book. What, what's been the, the feedback you've gotten uh, over the last year? I guess you get a lot of emails, I would imagine, a lot of letters, probably phone calls as well, right, from people that have read it? It's been a deluge. I mean, <laughs> it is, I mean, for the first time in my life, I've had to hire an assistant, believe it or not, <laughs> um, to handle all of the email traffic. And, you know, we have a Twitter following, and we have a Facebook page, and um, it's been wonderful. I mean, what, what has really been gratifying for me is when I switched from being an attorney to a therapist, I realized that what really gave me the greatest high in the world was the feeling that I had given someone something that was going to change their life. When you look at a person and you see the light go on inside of them, that's just a wonderful feeling. And the idea that now that there's this book out there and I'm hearing back from people that I've never even met and will probably never meet, and they're saying that that light got turned on, that's just incredibly gratifying. Mm. Well, again, it's called The Tools, and it's just coming out uh, this week in paperback. And uh, Barry, give out uh, the website. People can get a hold of the book, or maybe get a hold of you if they like. That would be great. The, the website is thetoolsbook.com. It's just recently been refurbished, and there's contact information on there. And there are also extras on there. There's a phone app available that actually has Phil and me read the tools to you. So if you're in a difficult situation, you can pull out your phone and listen to one of us walk you through a tool. It's like having Phil or Barry in your pocket. That's not bad. Yeah. 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 They have to pay a little bit more than that to see in person, I imagine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Neither one of us is taking your patience. Barry, it's a real pleasure to talk to you. Again, congratulations uh, on, on both uh, editions of the book. And when that uh, when you finish the next one, uh, we'd like to have you on again uh, whenever that comes we, out. We'd love to do that, and thanks so much. Great. Thank you, Barry. Okay, take Great. care.